The R1250GS, ultimate riding machine from ultimate driving brand. Our freshest iteration of the world's most popular adventure bike has all new... Oh, shit. No, that's the old one. Here's the R1250GS with all new... Uh, ah, all new valve covers. Of course, this must be monumental because that's well, the GS. It's flawless. If anything seems unimpressive, well, that's the motorcycle reviewing me. I must need revising. Right, let's sharpen our understanding of shift cam then. As the genius and beautiful head covers suggest, this must be some kind of variable valve tech. Bang! The piston moves down its power stroke. At bottom dead center, the exhaust valve opens, so we push cruddy air out on the exhaust stroke. Sorry, Greta. And top dead center, the exhaust valve closes, the intake valve opens, so we pull clean air in on the intake stroke. Then that valve shuts, so we compress on the compression stroke, and bang, we start over again. The whole dance is choreographed by our camshaft. It does a kind of twerk spinning its lobes up and down to give the valves a lift. Right. So that system is good enough at low RPM, and for most engineers it's good enough, period. But for the GS? Can't we find a better valve variation at high RPM? Bang! Power stroke. And then the exhaust valve opens and our piston expels Al Gore's nightmare, but because the engine is turning fast, and there's so much flow velocity moving this way, that we can actually open the intake valve a little bit before top dead center. And even though the piston is still rising, the current is enough to draw in fresh air, purging every last remnant of burnt exhaust with fresh charge. Then there's the intake stroke, but because it's fast, we can again leave the intake valve open a little past bottom dead center. Because there's so much flow velocity coming in, we can cram in a bit more air even though the piston is still rising at first. Hence, we have more charge and fresher charge for the next ignition. Bang! Yeah! 9% more horses up top, it's flaming fast! Not even fair to compare this to adventure bikes. The R1250's speed puts her in sport touring territory. Of course, I'm not precisely sure of the KPH when standing because Beamer stuck their GPS mount right in line with the dash. Not that there's any fault of the GS. The bike is just quantum leaps ahead of me and that it obeys the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. One can know their location or their speed, but not both at the same time. Hmm, yeah, that's, that's my bad. Another hiccup. 134 horsepower is frankly not useful off-road. But again, the GS is flawless in every facet, so I must be missing something here too. Hmm. Well, we know BMW made the intake valve open earlier and stay open later at high RPM. They added valve overlap, hence the brilliant sport performance. But off-road, well, either our GS ignored low RPM grunt an absurd notion, or there's more to the mechanics of how this is done. Aha! A second pair of lobes on the intake camshaft. Say our first cam pushes the valve open, starting here, and for this long. Then our second lobe pushes the same valve open starting here, earlier, and for this duration, so it closes later. And that's variable valve timing and variable valve duration, which explains our top end speed. But with two separate lobes, there's no reason why one couldn't lift the valve a lot and the other one a little. And that's variable valve lift.
Of course we want the intake wide open when the engine is pumping full revs, but when the engine turns slow, narrow valve lift actually increases port velocity, funneling more turbulent air at low revs, giving a fuller burn. <laughs> Hardy torque! And 14% more hitting lower than ever. Like an 800 pound badminton player, this behemoth changes direction at the flick of a wrist and floats up hills, even at safe near idle speeds. All thanks to variable valve lift, and all on a machine that still flies home at the end of the day, thanks to variable valve timing and duration. 134 horsepower for the highway, 143 newton meters for the dirt. A dyslexic nightmare, but a dual sport dream. If two faced bikes with two stage cams make sense anywhere, it's here. Hard to believe variable valves have only been seen on street bikes to date. Honda had a two-stage system as early as 1983. And Suzuki pioneered a camshaft with low pairs actuated by a solenoid in 1991. Bisono engine block. Shit. That's almost identical to BMW's shift cam, only it arrived three decades earlier. I mean, surely the GS wouldn't rip off ancient Japanese tech, unless it was still the best solution. Not. Shift cam is the engineering equivalent of a defunct clock. It's only optimized twice. Say this valve timing lift and duration is perfect at 4,000 RPM. Then this valve timing lift and duration is perfect at 7,000. Well, everywhere else, it's not quite right. The result is two discrete power bands. It pulls, then lulls, then pulls, then lulls. A bimodal power curve. Don't get me wrong, I like having two extra scoops of power. It's just, it's the GS. I kind of expected a more elegant upgrade than that. Something simpler? more progressive, now there's a technological revelation. Suzuki's latest centrifugal system is closer to CVVT, continuously variable valves. It optimizes timing only, but across a smooth spectrum, which is better than the two-trick pony BMW is running. Not least of all, because it's purely mechanical. Metal needs to break for the Hamamatsu design to go bad, whereas our Beamer relies on a computer-controlled solenoid to shift from one cam lobe to the other. Electricals. In here. Ah! Well, that works fine until it doesn't, then what? Well, if the shift cam actuator goes kaput in Mongolia, that's obviously because BMWs are designed to stretch my travel vocabulary. And if I need to top up oil in China, and the special filler cap wrench is BMW part number 7692446, three weeks shipping from Berlin to Wuhan, well, clearly my GS is trying to help me stop and smell the roses. That's a rider aid. Like the new Hill Start Control Pro, which senses pitch and electronically applies the brake so beginners can avoid learning to stop with the right foot up. Fantastic feature. I know I won't mind when the bike prevents those pesky non-beginners from using a slope to facilitate the classic trail turn. You know what? No. Now the R1250 GS might be the best adventure bike to everyone else in the world, but not me. Sure, it's sprung beautifully for carving, always was. Its boxer engine is quirky and impactful, always was. It's a lovely place to sit for 12 hours, always was. And the R1250GS is a very fine motorcycle, but as an update, which you can't roll away on for much less than 30 grand, I expect more than old valve tech and new needless complexity. I say that as a Bavarian too. My family name is Kluftinger. My family car is a hilariously impractical vintage BMW. I owned lederhosen before I owned pants. I eat vice first before noon and celebrate Oktoberfest in September, but I still 
just like the R1250GS. There are other bikes that carve like sport tourers, other quirky engine configurations, which are less shin-shattering off-road, and other lovely places to sit, now that BMW level trim is par for the course. Only that V-Strom costs half, half the price. And Suzuki is sitting on a far more elegant centrifugal valve system too. Put it in there, Suzuki, now. Maybe people will finally walk away from these things.